Hello there everyone, this is Ed from High Point Scientific. And what I've got for you here today is a video that's a part of our how-to series. Now, what I have here today is a ZWO ASI 2600 Pro camera. This is the monochrome version, but everything we're going to talk about today will carry over to the color version as well. Now, as you may have heard, the 2600 model in particular can suffer from an issue where you get a little bit of thermal grease or oil leaking onto the sensor, which you can see this unit has right there. Now, this was an issue that ZWO has acknowledged occurred on a number of these cameras that were produced with an excessive amount of thermal grease loaded onto the thermal pad that sits behind this sensor board. And over time, this can leak onto the sensor and impair the images that you're able to take with this. Now, they have released a guide on how to clean this yourself and taken steps to ensure that newer cameras are more conservatively loaded so that this shouldn't occur on a new uh, camera. But if you purchased a camera within that time period or if you purchased a new one and are experiencing this issue, we just wanted to take a minute here to make a guide that shows you a little bit more of an in-depth look on how to take down this camera, how to clean off that thermal pad, clean the sensor, and get this back into service. I know it can seem a little bit daunting uh, to take apart uh, a particularly pricey camera and clean it yourself, but if you just follow our guide here, you'll see that it's pretty easy and you'll just be back up and running in no time. Alrighty, so before we get started here, I'm just going to go over some of the supplies that you're going to need to tear this down, clean off that thermal grease, and then clean uh, the sensor itself. Now, first things first, we're gonna need a hex head or Allen style key. I'm using a 564 here, but I've found that a two millimeter works uh, just as well to undo these screws for the tilt plate and then the sensor window slash uh, do heating assembly underneath that. You're also gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm gonna be using a zero here, but anything that you have laying around that will seat properly within the Phillips head screws that hold the sensor board down to the main body will work. We're also going to need some cotton swabs for cleaning off the thermal pad itself and the surrounding board. And then you're going to need uh, some camera sensor cleaning swabs along with some uh, sensor cleaning uh, solution to clean off the sensor itself. Now I'm going to be using the solution and swabs that are found in the Apertura cleaning kit. We'll put a link to that down in the description below. But if you have a DSLR cleaning kit, uh, you might have these, or you can source them from any other vendor that sells camera style equipment. All right, so now that we've got everything that we're gonna need to clean and disassemble this camera, let's get started with the disassembly. So I'm just gonna move these off to the side until we need them. And we're gonna start by disassembling the tilt plate and then the sensor window slash dew heating uh, assembly underneath that. Now, I'm gonna take just take my Allen head screw and undo these screws right here. Now what you'll see next to these are these little grub screws. And this is what helps set the uh, tilt for this tilt plate. And so, I'm going to start undoing these, but what you'll see here is that I also have a little bit of painter's tape uh, on the top of the tilt plate that I've then carried over onto the side of the assembly. By putting this here, we ensure that when we put it back on, uh, the tilt is going to be in the same direction it was before we disassembled it. Uh, if you skip this, uh, you can always just adjust tilt later, and that can be in a separate video here. But just taking this little step will save you the hassle. So I'm gonna go ahead. This just lifts off as soon as you undo these three screws. I'm gonna put them right here so we just don't lose track of them. Alrighty. And so now we have six more screws of the same size around the outside here. 
So we're just gonna go ahead and undo those. Now that we've got that undone, we can just lift this off. Now you may have wondered why I didn't continue the index mark down the, the uh, side of the body as well. And that's because as you'll see, when we take this off, this actually has two pads on here that are going to correspond to two pins on the board itself, if we can get that to focus. There we go. And so that's what's going to run the uh, anti-do feature that this has going on. You can see some of those just right there. And so there's only one way that we can put this back in, so you don't have to worry about indexing it as we did with the tilt plate. So I'm just going to set that off to the side here. And now we've got everything uh, torn down and ready to start cleaning. Okay. So now that we've got those two pieces out of the way, we can go ahead and start cleaning this off. Now I'm going to start with the thermal pad that's behind this sensor board here, and that's a step that you want to make sure that you don't skip. If you just clean off the sensor itself, um, the ex any excess that's left on that thermal pad can work its way back onto the sensor, and you'll have to open this up again and clean it. So. What we're going to do to get that started is undo the four Phillips head screws that hold this sensor board in place. Now, these are assembled in such a way that there's two plastic spacers on the top and one little plastic spacer on the bottom. So now that we've got all four of those undone, we're going to just go ahead and gently tilt this out of the camera. Let's see, are those all undone? Looks like we still got a bit to go on this one here. There we go. Okay, so now you can just tilt this out and catch it. And for the rest of the cleaning, we're either going to want to hold this or find some way to rest it on something. Now I can see that the little plastic pieces that I was just talking about are still intact on these screws. If one of yours has fallen down to the bottom, just make sure you retrieve that. And before we put this back together, put it back onto that post. Okay, so now we're going to grab our cotton swab and just start swabbing the top of this thermal pad here. Now this one doesn't look too bad. It seems like maybe some of the uh, all of the excess uh, that was loaded on here is already on our sensor, but we're just going to go ahead and make sure that we clean it off all the same just to be sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and give that a couple good passes with this cotton swab. Use the other side here. And then go ahead and clean off the back of this as well. And again, I don't see any excess on this particular model, but you may see some around this spot. So this is good. And we're gonna go ahead and put this back together. So this can be a bit tricky to get those posts all lined up, and particularly if you're trying to film at the same time. But you can look in as you're closing the camera and try and line those posts up with the little screw holes in the body. Now, since the body is aluminum and we're using what looks like steel screws here, you wanna make sure that you don't cross thread these.
you want to just make sure that you take your time so that you screw these in without stripping them out. All right, now we can move on to the sensor. All right, so now that we've got uh, the sensor board back in place, we can go ahead and start cleaning the sensor. Now you may have seen uh, different ways online on how to do this. Uh, the way that we recommend and uh, the way that it's recommended that you do this in ZWO's own documentation is with the proper uh, sensor cleaning swabs and solutions. This will give you the best chance to clean this up while ensuring that you don't damage any coatings on the sensor or the sensor itself. Uh, now, again, I'm gonna be using tools from the Aperture Cleaning Kit, but you can source these from other places online or in DSLR cleaning kits. So, we're just gonna go ahead and get our swab out here and take our sensor cleaning solution and just wet the uh, tip of the tool here with a few drops of that cleaner. Okay. And so now I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down in nice, even strokes across the full width of the sensor. I'm just going to do that a couple of times here. And reapply sensor cleaning fluid as needed. The idea is that we want to get all of that grease up off of the sensor. This may take a couple of pads, or swabs rather, until we get it right. But again, there's no rush. Getting it clean is the most important part. I'm gonna need another swab here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna let that dry for just a moment here. Now the uh, the sensor these, this sensor cleaning fluid and these in general are volatile solutions so that once you're done cleaning it should evaporate off the surface pretty cleanly here. And before we go ahead and put this back together, we're just going to want to give it a minute to see if that uh, if we have any spots or residue left over on the sensor itself. I'm seeing a little bit left behind here, so I'm going to take another pass with our swab. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And so as you can see, now we've got a nice uh, clean sensor and we're ready to put this back together. All right, so now that we've got the sensor clean, we can go ahead and start reassembling this. Now, one thing that you do wanna do before putting this back together is recharge these desiccant tablets that are up in the sensor window slash dew heater section. Now these just pull out of this little uh, rubbery part here. You can see I've got one just right here. And what you want to do is take all of these out, put them in the microwave for two minutes on medium power, and that'll dry them back out. 
So if we introduce any moisture into the chamber while we were cleaning this up, these will go ahead and absorb that and prevent you from getting uh, issues where dew forms on the inside of this window itself. Now, with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and put this onto the camera. And again, you got two little uh, tabs here that connect to these two little tabs on the camera itself. So we're just gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that's on that side and get this back in place. So now I'm gonna start putting the body screws in and we're gonna do this in a similar fashion to the way that we did with the Phillips head screws on the sensor board. Okay, perfect. So now that we've got that, we're gonna wanna go ahead and put the tilt since, uh, plate back on here. And we've got our little mark here. So I'm gonna take that, match that up, and go ahead and start these screws. want to make sure that they're snug but not over tight. You don't want to risk uh, stripping out those threads there. But now that we got that all back into place, this is ready to go. All right, so now we've got a camera that's ready to be put back into service. Now, before you take this out for any serious imaging sessions, we do recommend that you take some flats with it first, just to make sure that everything looks good and everything's functioning the way that it should be. Additionally, there will be a written version of this guide, and you can find that linked down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching our ASI 2600 uh, grease cleaning guide here. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not all subscribed already. Thank you so much. This has been Ed with High Point Scientific, and until next time, clear skies. Thank you.